Hello there, uh, welcome to Hoyas Garage. Today I thought I'd give you an update of the Audi A2, although I'm not standing next to it. Now, uh, I, uh, well, because there's been <laughs> things happening to it, uh, maybe not so surprising with all the mileage. Right now the car is near 548,000 kilometers, so it's a bit of mileage on that car. Now, what happened? Well, at the end of the video, I will show you the weirdest problem that I've ever had with a car. I will try to explain what it was and how to fix it and so on. But first, I was just into servicing it, uh, you know, replacing the belt, the auxiliary belt or whatever you call it, uh, with that little pulley, and it's in a little kit that looks like this. I thought, I thought that I heard some weird noise from this wheel here, but it's feels feels good. But I will replace it anyhow since it's so easy. It's just a it's just a screw like this that holds it. Um, some recommends the replacement of this complete unit but um, well it's up to you I uh, it's a bit of a work and if the belt doesn't slip well no big deal I think a little bit of play no real difference, I think. Well, well, then I've got to spare, spare and used wheel if, if so, if needed. Then the old belt wasn't all that bad either, but I got a new one. The old is a 1082 millimeter long. This one is 1088. Let's see if that works. It should, according to some list of specifications somewhere. Any direction on it? Getting it over the alternator. Oh, come on. There we go. There it is. Yep. That was swift. And then I thought, well, um, gearbox oil was due. I thought it. I typically have replaced it every second year, so it was time again. And it's not too complicated, but I'll show you how to do it. Look here. So here's the oops, 17 millimeter Allen key that I made <laughs> from a couple of screws and nuts. And it's the transmission drain that I'm opening here. Gearbox oil is due. If it is due, I don't know, but I will do it every second year. Or I am doing it every second year. There we go. Good. Time to get the plug back in again. I just added a little, little bit of sealant further on the threads. There's no washer here, of course. I think the the plug is slightly conical. If one would over tighten it, I think one will crack the housing. I'm a bit careful so I don't get any dirt at the, on the plug. And a bit of sand in the gearbox would not be very funny. Then filling is a bit awkward. Let's see here. So I'm going to try to get a hose into that hole. I just want to wipe off any sand that could get in, into the gearbox opening. That should make it clean. Good. Now that we're weird tool again. Let's 
same as the other one. Can one see it? Here it is, yeah. So, same plug as the drain plug, same type. Now, I will have to try to get a hose in there. And I have a special clean hose that I only use for transmission fluid. I will use that one. So, from the right hand side of the engine bay area, I come with this. Let me show you. I come with this. <laughs> hose with a lot of paper on it right now so it won't collect any dirt on its way down now I'll take away the paper and insert let me see and uh, insert the tube there we go Okay, there it is. Ah. Now I'll start filling. 1.9 liters. I'll overfill a little bit, it will flood and so on. Liter number two. Now I will fill all the two liters, and I don't think all the two liters will <laughs> get room in the box, so I'll quickly pull the hose and try to get the plug in place, and then it will be a bit messy down there, but you will see maybe. If I can catch that or not, I will have to do it quite quickly. Yeah, didn't spill that much. I think that was about the deciliter that I spilled, so I think 1.9. Fairly accurate, I would say. Okay, and tighten it. That's coming from the hose. Okay. Not too tight, it's good. There we go, new gearbox oil, perfect. Then there was one more thing, um, the oil sensor was uh, not, not, yeah it wasn't indicating anymore, it was just giving me a warning, it just said oil sensor, not oil level when it's getting low, oil sensor it said instead. So as I was replacing the engine oil, of course I um, Bought, I bought some new uh, pirate uh, sensors thing and, well, replacing it looks something like this. It's giving a warning message that it doesn't work as it should, so I'll disconnect the electrical connection. I don't know how much oil that will come out now when I open this. Five millimeter Allen key, it says. Okay, there we have it. So let's see if the new one fits. Ah, oh, I will just clean the surface there a bit first. And a bit, and a bit careful, it's just aluminium threads. Yeah, very careful, but with those small screws and this long lever, then one can easily just 
over tighten and destroy the threads, but that felt well, that felt okay. Then things started to happen to the car. Um, it gave me an error code for the engine management thing, check engine, you know, and it said 17809, I think. Yeah, and exhaust gas recirculation, something short circuit to ground. Crap, I thought. So um, I just simply thought that, okay, I get a new EGR valve onto the car. No, it's sitting there in front of the engine. It's not too difficult. You just loosen these and you can even, you can even bend that steel tube a bit because it has some kind of flanges there. So you can just bend it loose and then you just take it off. No, it sits like this, you take it off. Um, then I wanted to calibrate it with this VCDS Rostec bag com thing, you know, with the computer. And it didn't want to calibrate. I checked the voltage on the car and you know everything, but no, it did not want to calibrate. So the problem called, let me double check, I think I made another one. Yeah, exactly. 17809 was still there. And I was looking and looking and looking and I was tracing the, uh, the harness even into, well, if this was the Audi A2, you know, the uh, even if it's a right hand driven car, the, there's a lid below your feet when you're on the left side of the car under the carpet. So I was checking in there, is some, is some cable damaged or something? And then, no, I was completely lost. I couldn't find anything that would be related to any short circuit somehow. So what to do then? Well, internet is everyone's friend, so I got some clues, some ideas. Uh, this Audi um, A2 uh, forum over in the UK is really good. Um, so there was some clues indicating that it might be something completely different. <clears throat> on the crankcase ventilation, I would say, crankcase, crankcase ventilation that starts kind of, how does this sit, something like that under the engine, and some tube up there and so on. Um, for some weird reason there's a little heater on the hose, it looks a bit like this. It's a little black piece that you just connect electrically. Um, that was suspected. And especially since <laughs> the car has no cruise control, but the fuse for the cruise control was blown. How weird isn't that? So I disconnected this little heater. I put in a new, fo uh, new fuse <laughs> and then Connected it again and then it just blew. Okay. Then I just disconnected it, put in a new fuse, and then after a while, because I drove it and I had to drive it, I couldn't do all the work at one time. Then the this light just disappeared. Uh huh. Weird. Then I decided to no, I'll I'll buy a new one. So I bought a new one and it was a bit expensive, like 90 euro or something, because I couldn't find any pirate part. I had to buy it at Audi. Then I. Well, it's really easy to replace, you just um, take the hoses, hoses away and then... But then <laughs> this little heater was completely clogged with mayo, some call it, you know, kind of whitish gum, something. Um, and then, whoops, I thought, okay, this engine doesn't really have any crankcase ventilation. Um, and then I got a bit curious on the status of this little oil separator it's called which I learned after <laughs> after over 500,000 kilometers I learned the hard way that this is a service part that should be replaced every 60,000 kilometers and I have never done it um, so I bought a new one and I was about to change or replace this thing but what happened then and um, then things started to happen. 
As I was out driving on a rather bumpy rough road, I was heading to a guy with a Carrera RS from 73 and taking photos of the car. Uh, then I hit something that was <laughs> a pothole or something and the strut bearing just punched it away. Well, it just collapsed, so to speak. The, and it was due to severe corrosion within the rubber. Oh, look at this. The whole rubber bushing is just kind of fractured or, well, it's just broken. No wonder that there's a lot of weird noise from the front suspension. So the car was, you know, a bit like this. And I gave it a try to see if I just could loosen the nut because the nut is a bit of a hell to get loose. There is a, there is a video um, that I've done on replacing the other side. And there I had already had this struggle with the nut, so the second time the nut wasn't all that difficult to take off. But here, oh, a bit of a trouble to say the least. So I had to pause that a bit because it's my daily driver. That's always the trouble, or always the challenge. Um, then, as I was starting the car, going back home one day, the clutch bearing went, or throw out bearing, some call it. And of course, that's gearbox out, and you have to take, yeah, okay, drive shaft, everything. So, there was a big job piling up then. And the strut bearing, the drive shaft was a bit fishy, so it was about time to do it also, and the rubber boot was a bit cracked. And I would have to replace everything with the clutch then, of course, and you know, big job. Uh, calling Audi, okay, it's 1500 euro. Calling a more local mechanic, ah, uh, it's a hell of a job. Do you really want me to do it? Not sure how much is it? Ah, uh, it's a thousand euro, okay. Well, but uh, wait, uh, I don't think the car is even worth this. So I could, of course, have done this myself, but it's my daily driver, and I would have to be working for a whole weekend probably to do this, and I might not be able to solve it over a weekend. And then the car is so old, so that having spent one or two weekends in the garage just working with the daily driver, and then whatever can happen to that engine with almost 550,000 kilometers on it. So I thought, no, it's time to stop now. So I polished it, took some nice pictures, and put it out on the internet for 1,000 euros, almost, just below. And it sold. And a guy sold it, or a guy bought it. <laughs> I could sell it. Um, so it's no longer with me, that's why I'm standing here. Um, now I've gotten a little update about the status of the car. Uh, because this guy had just built a new garage with a lifting system and he didn't have to use the car as a daily driver. So over some months even, because this is some time ago now, over some months he fixed it. And he wanted it for his daughter for to be his, her first car uh, but apparently she didn't really like the car so the car is now for sale at about twice the price but am i interested mm, should i buy back my old car <laughs> uh, i'm not so sure so that's a little audi a2 update that's all from my today take care yeah.